All right. Hi, my name is Pamela Peaks, and my website is www.pamelapeaks.com. Okay, Pamela. Why do porn? Let's start there. Let's let's talk about the beginning when you first started. Um. Well, actually, I got started uh, up in Canada because that's where I'm from, mm -hmm. and uh, I was uh, feature dancing up there, and then I started hanging out with some other feature dancers up there that were doing some porn, mm -hmm. and they kind of got me into it because uh, I've had big boobs for a long time. I had my first implants when I was like 16. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I started hanging out with some other big boob girls up there that were feature dancers that were doing porn, and they helped get me into it. And then... Um, I moved to uh, Vegas, and then I started doing some stuff out of uh, Vegas, traveling over here and all that. And uh, But that's how I got started. It was all just from uh, dancing and people just making offers and stuff. So you started dancing at 16, or just you got the implants at 16? No, I started dancing at 16. Canada, everything is uh, 18. So I kind of had, yeah, I started a little early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my first implants were like ease. So I never really got small implants. I figured if I'm going to get implants, I'm just going to go big. Wow. So I actually had close to a D anyways naturally. So it was easy for me to get uh, big ones installed because when you have some skin there, it's easier to get bigger ones installed. So, you know, why am I just going to go to like another D? I was like, so I just went for like, I think I got like E's or double E's, like the first ones. So it was pretty cool. <clears throat> Who paid for them when you were 16? I mean, how does that come about? I had a credit card, and I just charged it on my credit card. Yeah, it was pretty cool. What did your cool. parents say? Oh, they so didn't know. They didn't notice that your boot, I mean, or that you were out for the week? I uh, mean, like you had to lay down and couldn't, like, really move that well? Or, or you didn't have any, any problems with the surgery? I wasn't around that much because I've always been kind of like a wild child and just not at home much. Uh, I like to party. And um, so they just didn't really notice. Uh, I finally had to say something, honestly, to my dad. Uh, he was eating his whatever, Cheerios or breakfast, reading the paper. And uh, I said something like, yeah, Dad, you notice anything different? And he's just like, nope. And he just went back to the paper. My parents are kind of like very laid back. So, yeah. And then, you know, when they heard, okay, great, whatever. You know, why? They don't really understand. But, you know, they didn't really, un you know, really know too much about my dancing either. So, you know. Yeah, so I kind of wanted it for, you know, me too, just, just you know, because it, it's fun, the attention and all that, yeah. And the D's just weren't big enough? Nah, <laughs> it's just because they were just more average, so you kind of got to be uh, different. Plus, a lot of the girls in Canada were already, like, humongous. Okay. Like, S, G's, H's, humongous. So, when you're just a D, you, you don't, you, you know, you don't stick out. Oh, I would have been an upset in Canada. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about money, right? So okay. when you notice that the girls with the really, really big ones, the guys are calling them over more, you know, then you then you then you're like you want to make make the money, and you realize that the ones with the bigger boobs are making all the money. So I actually went back and got like two more jobs like in another week, and that's when I went up to like this size, because I was just pissed because I want to make all the money. <laughs> Is it different here? <laughs> Is it different here? No, it's the same everywhere. I didn't know, you know, but I just figured, you know, they're men. It's all got to be all the same everywhere. So, uh, yeah, and it's it's true. The bigger you go, the more money you make. It's totally true. I thought about doing the whole, you know, uh, basketball thing, you know, but then I kind of just decided against that. I can still always do that, of course. Boob job right. takes an hour. But, um, it, you know, but I just, uh, to be honest, I play a lot of sports. Okay. You know, I'm really good at sports, and I've always been, like, an athlete and stuff, and I just thought that, you know, if I get them done that big, it's just going to impede on my ability to do a lot of sports. When did you realize so. that, that your boobs were going to make you money? Just I mean, watching. I mean, at 16, what were you, was it your friends, or who were you around that you realized, hey, this could... Oh, well, you know, I'm doing, I'm dancing in a club from, uh, you know, 10 in the morning till 7 at night. Then I'd go to the second job from, you know, 8 p.m. till like 3, 4 in the morning. So I was working two jobs and stuff. And uh, you just notice, you're just watching. I've always been extremely observant. So I'm just sitting there and I'm just watching. And I'm going, who's making the money? Because when you're sitting there not making money, you're wondering why. Yeah. You know, because I've always been cute and stuff. So I'm just like looking around going, wait a minute, why aren't I making money? Oh, wait a minute, that chick with the J boobs over there is making more money. So then I just kept getting boobs. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, but it works because it does increase your income. I have girlfriends that, uh, 
you know, if they sit around on, you know, they got websites and their boobs are out to here and they make a fortune every month. They just update photos every week and, you know, they make a fortune. I mean, like I said, I would do that and that would probably make my life easier in the sense that where I could just sit around and collect on my website. But like I said, I'm just too athletic and I like to go to nightclubs a lot and party and all that. And I think that would just be just too much, you know, yeah, well, yeah. for right now anyways, yeah. Did your family have money growing up or are you just you like materialistic things or what is it about the money at such a young age that that got you started in dancing uh my parents you know my parents had money but they always tra uh taught me that like i had to earn my own okay so my parents could have easily just said yeah here but they weren't like that because they had to work for their own so they're like oh you got to work for your own money which i think is great because then that teaches you the value of a dollar and you know makes you feel better when you earn things on your own because you're not like real spoiled and stuff and have stuff given you. Whereas, you know, I've had some friends where they had, you know, just Porsches and stuff given to them at like 15 or 16 and they're like way spoiled and they're all fucked up because they're so used to some people like giving them stuff. So, um, yeah, no, it's, you know, they, they raised me right. I, I started working when I was uh, 10. My dad actually has a law firm and I started working for him when I was like 10. Okay. So I've used to been working, I, I'm used to working ever since I was, you know, really small so the stripping thing doing two jobs that was just real easy for me okay. so I, I love I mean working comes real easy for me I have a really strong work ethic because of that which is great yeah working at 10 I would assume that you would have a strong work ethic yeah the, um, law firm didn't appeal to you <laughs> no that was no you know but he was paying me good money so you know I was getting like 20 bucks an hour, you know, so that's like pretty good money. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm running, you know, and then I started helping run the business and like answering phones and stuff like that, interviewing clients and stuff like that. And I was doing that really young too. And, you know, and that just teaches you the whole thing about a business and writing checks, doing accounting, stuff like that, you know, so, um, but then, yeah, you just get bored and then you just want to like do something else. And then, um, I was watching some shows and stuff, and then on the talk shows, they were kind of talking about how these girls were making a lot of money, like, dancing and stuff, and I was going, wait a minute, I'm way better looking at these bitches on television, so if they're making that, I can make a lot more, and then that's when I got the idea for that, so, and hey, who doesn't like to work in a bar, you know, I love to party, I like to drink, and who, who wouldn't want to, like, work in a bar and, you know, and just be naked and have guys ogling you and telling you how pretty you are and you're making money, you know, and it's all cash and all for you, you know, you can't complain. When did it turn into porn? When did you start? After you danced for a while. Yeah, when I danced was the for, offer for uh, you to be able God. to be your first porn movie. I'd say around 18. Uh, around 18, I was hanging out with some girls in, uh, yeah, in Canada, and then I did some stuff up there, and then I was doing some uh, like lesbian shows for the feature dancing and stuff on the stage, because up there in Canada, it's totally different. It's like Europe, and there's no laws saying, telling you you can't do stuff like on the stage. You know, not like here in the States. So you could really get away with, like, you know, screwing girls on stage and, like, all kinds of crazy stuff, dildos, like really big dildos and, you know, all kinds of lotions, whipped creams and all that stuff. And here they don't allow that in a lot of clubs. Right. And so it was just a lot more liberal up there. So I shot with, like, some girls up there that had done some stuff. And then, um, and then I, yeah, then I decided actually that I wanted to do a website because I was thinking, I started reading some stuff about, like, websites, and I was like, I think I want to get a website, you know, because it just seemed, like, so easy. You could just get on the computer, and, like, the world sees you, mm -hmm. and um, I've always been okay with computers and stuff and typing, so I was like, I think I want to do the website thing and then just, you know, put pictures up and have people send me money. I just like the concept. <laughs> so then I realized that... Um, I probably had to move to the states and stuff because states is just more money out here. Uh, Canadians, where I was from, it's all like socialism, and so people aren't as into uh, money. And um, there's just more people with money here, you know. And then up there, there's a lot less population in Canada. It's more like mountains and stuff, and a lot less people, more land. So I just said, okay, I think I'm gonna move to the states. And then uh, I was reading about Vegas and stuff and how like you know, the economy was good in Vegas, and so I just, like, went there, and then um, I started my website up, like, right away, and so I've been making money on my website for, like, a while now, and um, it's just great. You get checks mailed to you, like, every week, and all you have to do is post pictures. I just <laughs> love it. It's just so easy, you know, and then, um, yeah, and then I got hooked up with some big boob features movies, which gives you a lot of exposure uh, right away. Do you want me to turn that off? So, 
Tell me if it's too loud. Do you want me to turn it off? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so of course, since I have the, um, oh God, do you smell that? Just the light. Oh, okay. Um, so of course, since I had the really, really big boobs, uh, uh, my friends made some calls to some directors and then they put me in some like busty features, uh, right away and stuff. So that was pretty cool. And then next thing you know, there's my porn career started. So then on the side, I started, um, doing private shows. Cause actually when I, oh yeah, in Canada, also, I uh, I think I've just always had this just business thing going in my head. In Canada, I started when I was stripping. I had a guy, you know, ask me when I was like shit, 17 or something, or I go ask if if he would, if I would go back to the room with him. And I was like, oh god, that's gross, and you know, I can't do that, and I'm like flustered. But he was like a real old guy, like 70 something years old. I knew he wasn't gonna like do anything to me or whatever, and. I wasn't like scared. I ended up going to his room. And then when I made just as much money going to his room as like standing around for like, you know, six to eight hours in boots. And I actually worked in this two story club that was humongous with like a hundred and something girls a night. And, you know, after 16 hours of being on your feet, you're, you know, your legs, you know, will get tired. But, um, so I was like, wait a minute, that's better. You know, go in the room. You're only there for 45 minutes to an hour. And then you're getting almost just as much money as you're making from the you know, eight hours. So then I was like, okay. So then I kind of started doing that. And then what I did was I started, uh, finding like other hot looking girls. And, um, I, so I created like celebrity lookalikes. Cause I, I knew that like everybody had a thing with like celebrities. I was a fantasy girl. So I had like, you know, Cindy Crawford lookalikes, Sharon Stone lookalikes. And I was doing that like 18 years old. And I was doing really well with that. And then, um, and then that's when I got the idea for the website mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, then I also got fed up with the weather because Canada there's a lot of snow, and I got fed up. So then I uh, so then I moved to Vegas, and then I started doing the um, the private show thing in Vegas. And in Vegas, you know, you can make a lot of money, you know, because the guys come there with money to spend the whole gambling thing, and uh, you know, you can make thousands thousands in a day there, thousands, it's just sick money. So I got very spoiled there, you know, very spoiled. Um, here I am, you know, going around to like suites, you know, like penthouse suites with like, you know, six TVs with like butlers and maids and everything on call. And we're going to five star dinners, like five star restaurants. They're, they're, everything's free because the guy's like a high roller. And then, um, you know, he's giving me five grand just to hang out with him all night. And then I'm like his eye candy because I'm like on his arm while he's gambling. So it's like a good luck charm, you know, and then they give you money to like gamble with, which is totally freaking cool. And I'm a pretty good gambler. So I'm there <laughs> and I'm paying for money. Yeah, that's like an extra <laughs> two, man. So I'm there and he's giving me like, say like 500 bucks. And since I'm pretty good at blackjack, you know, I'd change that maybe in like a thousand, 1500. And then, you know, I'm just like sticking that in my purse so he can't see or whatever, you know, but it, it's, it's, known up front that like I keep whatever you know I right, make and that's just an extra you know thousand or two that I make as a tip and it was just that that's the life I still do that in Vegas I still have a place out there that is the life um has, has there been a any bad experiences in doing that um Nah, no, nah, I haven't had any bad experiences. But then again, I've always been I mean, like have tall. Have there been any high rollers that have just been jerks or maybe oh. skipped you for money? Have you had any? Ever been sent to the hospital or oh, no, money no. stolen in doing that? Stolen? No, I have had some instances, honestly, where in the beginning, like, I didn't know what I was doing. So I'd have guys give me, like, uh, you know, chips from, like, uh, what is it, miniature golf places, and I thought they were from casinos. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, but you don't know. You know, you're just starting. You don't know. Or guys, like, giving you, like, jewelry, and they're trying to make it seem like it's, like, really expensive diamond jewelry, and then, you know, it's worth, like, you know, $10 from Nordstrom or something, and... Yeah, but you don't know. You, you just trust everybody. You don't know until like you get screwed over and stuff, and then it's like, oh wait, people aren't all, people aren't all nice, you know. And the same thing at the strip club. They'll pay you in a check sometimes for their dances, and the checks don't go through, you know. But it's kind of your own fault. But then again, you don't know, uh, you know. And then you know, it's the counterfeit money. A lot of counterfeit money out there. So then you guy would get you for like an hour or two, and then he gives you three one hundred dollar bills, and then they're fake. You know, so yeah, that happens all the time to everybody, but you know, you learn, you learn, you know, that happens to you. It's like, oh, okay, now they got the machines installed where they check the bills and stuff so it doesn't happen anymore. And everybody gets screwed in this business sometime. It's just going to happen, right. you know, but, um, 
I, I, I'm happy that I'm tall because if you're tall, I happen to be like five nine, so that helps because I think if some you know guy who's out there who's kind of psycho is gonna like do something to a girl, he's maybe gonna pick somebody who's like more petite, you know. And you ref- haven't had any psycho incidents. I haven't mm. had any. No, I mean we get some guys that are just you know maybe call too much for like you know phone sex and stuff like that, but you know now I advertise that on my site, so I just send them there. <laughs> You know, but no, I haven't had any, no, I mean, you you, you, you can most, fill out people on the phone a lot. What uh, is the most strange thing that someone has asked you um, to do? In a oh, show? God, that's a book in and of itself. <laughs> I had a guy once asked me, um, I actually worked, this is funny, I actually worked in, um, in Canada, like I said, it's very liberal up there, and I actually worked in a strip club, which was actually kind of like a brothel. And um, you go in there and they have a menu. And if a guy would ask for a dance, the girl would laugh in his face because it was just a menu, you know. And uh, we got some wild ones in there, and it was hysterical because there's like 20 girls in a night. We, we each had our own booth, and they were all next to each other. They were the size of bathrooms. And it was so funny because you could always tell, like, what girl was, like, next to you by the, by the sounds of her orgasms, you know. So we all knew how each other one sounded <laughs> for the orgasms. It was a riot. And we would just get hammered. Sometimes we'd see, like, 20, 25 guys a night. Oh. So I always look back to that. Like, that's where I learned my education for porn. You know, because I saw so many guys there. But yeah, I had one guy who like wanted a blowjob and a haircut at the same time. And I can, I was like, dude, how how do you expect me to do that? <laughs> you know, how do you expect me to do that and do it well? You know, uh, guys that want me to take like uh, my boots or I walk, or wear like thigh high boots and the heels are like really long and skinny and just shove it really hard up their asshole. You know, loved when it. When you first did that, yeah, I was going to ask you, how was yeah, that the first the time? Is it something that you practiced at home? Or no, when he first you first asked know. you, you were like, oh, you, you just said, yes, I can do it. You just go with it. You just go with it. Well, you're in a club. There's a lot of other people. I'm best friends with the managers and the bouncers. So it's like, you know, um, yeah, so you're there and you just go with it. And then that's when, you know, you're learning that all the fetishes, which you don't even know anything about. And then it's like, oh, that's a fetish. That's a, that's a ass fetish. That's like, yeah. Yeah, so those are the guys that I'm doing now, you know, with dildos up the ass, you know, but you don't know that that sh- should even exist, you know. Oh, my God, why would he want to heal up his ass? Like, what the fuck? I don't get it, you know. But it's, yeah, it's weird. It's time, and, you know, you're just doing it or whatever, but it's a learning experience, you know. Have you picked up any fetishes that you like for yourself? Uh, That I like? Sure. Uh, yeah, I like chicks. I'm into girls. Um. I'm kind of into girls with boobs, more than girls that don't have boobs. Uh, obviously, good looking. Um, orgies. I don't know if you call that a fetish, mm-hmm. but and I'm, I'm into voyeurism, like watching people too. Um, when did that start? When do you think, like, just the whole sexual <clears throat> something you think that you were born with, or do you remember at what age did you start? Oh, bec- yeah. Sexually. I've always been a freak. Yeah, when I was like five, six years old, I'd run around the neighborhood and I'd have everybody like, I'd have all the guys take their pants down because I want to see their dicks. And I went to Mardi Gras and then they always want you to like take your top off and I was like totally obliterated on the balcony and they want to see my big boobs and stuff and I'm like, no, you all got to take your pants down. And I got like everybody in the middle of the street to like take their pants down. So I got pictures of that and that those streets get like totally crowded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I have pictures of like all these guys' cocks like sticking out the <laughs> street. Yeah, because I was like, it's not fair, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think I've always been extremely, extremely sexual, totally. I remember, like, I'd come out of the shower when I was little, and they'd take the towel, and I'd, like, rub it in between my legs and stuff like that. I've always been, like, a little horny thing, totally. Always, like, you know, wanting to watch dirty movies at my friends' houses, and, you know, because it was, like, their dads, so we'd do right. that, you know, when the dads were at home and stuff. And, yeah, that's why I feel like this is kind of, like, a natural thing for me. You know, because I'm just, yeah, kind of like a nympho. I'll see, like, five or ten guys in a day for, like, escorting or whatever, and I'll still masturbate and still have orgies, like, after. So I'm pretty pretty high libido. And I've learned that a lot of people are, you know, very different. Like, a lot of people have extremely high libidos. A lot of guys I'll talk to, they'll jack off, like, five, six times a day, you know, as soon as they wake up in the shower, you know, whatever, you know, lunch hour. You know, they're just masturbating, like, all day long whenever they can. You know, and there's other people that can go without having sex for, like, a week or two, like, not a problem. What about you? No, 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 I'm How long can you go? Huh? How long can you go without having sex? Oh, not very long. Not very long, no. But you have to remember, I do private shows, too, so I'm getting it pretty much every day. So, yeah. But if I go, like, a couple days where I'm not working or I take a vacation or something, I always have to make sure I do something. 
you know. How personal are your private shows as far as, like, do you, is there a difference between when you're doing a private show versus if it was someone that you invited over that's not, you're not getting money from? Oh, Because well, you said course. that you like, you like having sex, so where do you draw the line, like, mentally, or do you? Well, it's very hard in the beginning because, you know, yeah, you don't know these people. You're going to all different places and stuff. Uh, you know, that's why I never turned anything down because I figured everything was an experience and I've always been kind of adventurous, mm -hmm. you know. So I think you kind of have to have an adventurous spirit to do that. You're always going to different cities, different rooms and all this stuff, you know. Vegas was like a very nice place to learn because obviously it's Vegas, but then again, that's not reality sometimes. Sometimes you're in New York and you go to different places and um but uh yeah i mean it's always different when someone's paying you obviously if they're good looking it's going to be a lot easier right. of course um you know but sometimes you get some people that aren't so you know good looking you just kind of have to go with it but you uh you know you make the most of the situation however you know you, as much as you can you know and again going back to the brothel and how many people i saw there and you know being that I was adventurous, I've experienced so many different types of people now that I've kind of learned how I, to feel out somebody like really fast. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they'll do interviews sometimes with, um, like, they, they interviewed some guy who worked on the street for like years. Not that I can compare myself to that, but I, I can in the sense with the, uh, my ability to like feel out people real fast. I feel like now when I'm like with somebody, you know, for a private show, it's like within a few minutes I can be like, ah, uh, he's gonna wind up the ass, or he's gonna want that, or he's gonna. I can feel it because I've done so many different right. things now. Right. Yeah. So, but then porn is a totally different world. Right. You think you know a lot, but then you come into porn and it's like, oh my God, food? One of my first porn is they're sticking like fruit cocktail all over me in a bathtub. Right. And I'm like, what the hell is that about? You know, and then I find out later there's like cult, cults out there of people that like to watch people getting boned with food on them. Now, I hadn't heard that one before. That one was new to me. And then I talked to one of my male porn star friends, and he said that he had boned on Kentucky Fried Chicken and mashed potatoes on a picnic table during porn. And I just started cracking up. I said, I didn't even know that shit existed. So it's very interesting, definitely. And I, I can't say I've learned everything. I'm sure I got another 20 years to go, learn everything. But, yeah, it's there's a lot of interesting stuff out there. Oh. You know, guys wanting to eat their own cum, you know, I, I never understood that one, but that's totally big. I have a lot of clients myself that will ask me to take, you know, the rubber when they're done and then pour it in their mouth. And I never understood that and find, figure out later, oh, that's Dom. That's a form of domination, you know, and yeah, it's interesting stuff. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. One more question um, on the private, when... How do you, well, how do I ask this? Um, Set up the clients? No, no, no. Oh. Um, have you said no to anything? I guess I'm trying to figure out. What, oh, yeah. When, as you're deciding, like, when they're saying, I want this, do you know it already? What, well, you or do how do you gently say toilet. no? I mean, I'll say no to that. <laughs> you're not, you're not. You get that all the time. That's a yeah, so what, defecation and defecation and so-called water sports. That's when a guy wants to be uh, pissed on. I'll pee on guys. That's fine. It's called also called the golden shower. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so yeah, water sports. But then a lot of guys want to get defecated on and be used as a human toilet. Yeah, yeah, I don't do that. A lot of girls do brown showers. It's also called that. But there are a lot of girls that do that. I just won't do that. A lot of times it's done in the bathtub for, you know, obviously hygiene right, and stuff. Right. Keep it cleaner. But, um, yeah, that's, that's something I definitely wouldn't do. I just, So yeah. with all the <laughs> education, knowledge, and just personal experience and just what you have inside of you, what do you want to ultimately do with um, your porn career? Uh, ultimately, I want to, uh, you know, I want, I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to do everything. I'm, I'm already a, uh, I'm starting my production company this year. It's actually already started. Uh, Pamela Peace Productions. I'm doing my first movie in like three months. Let's see like big boob movies okay. uh, on the beach, like pretty stuff, features. And then, uh, so I'm going to make a lot of money off that. I got hookups with that. And then I'm uh, I'm also kind of doing like a talent agency thing. I have 80 girls already, and I'm helping them uh, get work. And I can get the girls to show up, and they're all hot girls. Um, also, yeah, of course, I got the website going, which I've had forever. And then um, 
I do all the conventions now where that's really good. That gets you a lot of traffic. When the fans see that you're like not only like pretty but very cool, that gets you a lot of traffic to your site, which helps me make money doing private shows, which helps in the sales of my movies. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, producer, director, slash everything. I want to do it all. I want to do it all. I want to, you know, I want to be out there and I want to be like really rich and famous. Uh, I have two TV shows going now. Um, because I'm just really good with the camera and I'm funny. I, I'm doing one. It's a nude comedy cooking show. It's called Pamela Peaks in the Kitchen, like question mark, exclamation point, because nobody pictures me in the kitchen. Right. And, uh, yeah. What so kind I'm of nude. cooking show? What kind of cooking will you be doing? It's different food every week. Uh, our first week was last week, and we did all kinds of sausages. So, of course, we incorporated that with, like, phallic-type situations in each right. other's mouths. And then I had blowjob shots, which are made from, like, amaretto with whipped cream. So I'm putting, like, you know, the whipped cream on, on me and my other friend's boobs, and we both got, you know, huge boobs. And then we got the other male porn star, like, licking them off, and he's getting smashed and doing shots mm -hmm. with us. And um, so that was fun. Yeah, it turned out I couldn't really cook sausages worth shit, but, you know, I was just <laughs> in the background, like, doing shots and just, you know, making comments. But it's a new, it's a nude show, so I have a different, uh, a different girl porn star on every week and a different male porn star every week, and you know we just like attack him, so he has a ball. So that's really fun. That's on every Saturday night on Channel 25, and that's great. And then I have um, a new one, a new talk show called Pamela Peak Speaks, and that's starting in two months, where I'm just interviewing like different porn stars every week. Eventually, hopefully, we're gonna get some uh, sponsors and stuff like that and get budgets going where. I'd like to get to the point where I'm interviewing like real celebrities and stuff. That would be really fun. I would love to do that because I know everything about Hollywood. Do you have any celebrity clients now? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I've had those since, yeah, since I started. They're just like people, you know, but they have more money. So they can do this more often. So I actually have, uh, yeah, I actually have a, a lot of celebrity clients and some of them are able to come over uh, every day because they're so rich. So, you know, sometimes I set them up with like, you know, different girls, you know, every day and stuff like that because they make a lot of money. So, because it's an expensive uh, hobby. So you said it's a, uh, you're doing a, I looked on your site, comedian. Do you tell oh. jokes or have you ever done stand up or is it something that you want to do in the porn? How, uh, how do you see yourself parents... using your comedic <laughs> abilities? My parents are funny. My dad's like Chevy Chase. My dad's like a riot. Like when we were little, we'd go out in the station wagon, you know, things would go wrong and he'd be like, don't worry, we're a family. That He's exactly like Chevy Chase in vacation. And so I, you kind of get it just from like the people you hang out with. And I always hung out with people that were funny. And uh, yeah, and my parents were always hysterical. So it was like, you know, we were, when we were little, we'd always have the parties at our house and stuff. So my, my dad would just entertain. And so I think I just get it from that. But I don't know if I, I would be one to want to really even go up on a stage. I don't, it's not that I don't think I could do it, but that's just not my thing. I'm more into just like, you know, being witty with other people, interviewing people and just uh, having fun, keeping things positive. Uh, you know, I'm not really into like degrading people at all. I think that's boring and I think it's mean. I like making people feel good. And I'm into, uh, you know, interviewing people that I think are interesting and uh, and just being funny. Kind of like more like a Jimmy Kimmel type, you know? Yeah. Giving the shots to like Snoop Doggy Dog, I thought that was hysterical, you know? Because everybody knows yeah. Snoop doesn't drink, but you know, he got him annihilated off tequila shots. It was hysterical. That's the type of stuff I want to do, just, you know? <laughs> make people crack up. Howard Stern in the beginning when he was nice to people, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, because he was. He was actually really funny, like, years ago, but now he's kind of turned, you know, he's kind of mean, you know, so I, I just don't think mean's funny. I did Jenny Jones. I was bored out of my mind. Do you think it works bored. for him money-wise, though? Or, I mean, is it something that you would do? Considering you're a businesswoman, if you're doing this oh, yeah, comedy show and then they say, uh -huh. if you're mean, you'll make more, would you be mean? Mm-mm. <laughs> no no because it's all about my reputation and like I have a reputation as just being like a fun like party trick everybody likes to be around me on sets people call me just because they like to be around me I'm always in a good mood you know so that's all my reputation I got to stick with that you know but I, uh, there's a void for that too I mean you know running around and interviewing people at the convention and stuff like that there's plenty of people that want to see like fun interviews with like porn stars and stuff like that and you know instead of like the typical article that you read on the porn site uh I had a nightmare scene in the day the guy couldn't get what you know keep it all like poly yo when was the first time you had sex and nah, 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 nah. like what are your experiences like different stuff outside of the industry there's so much to yeah. talk to people about yeah. you know so 
I don't, yeah, I, I'm really excited. I think it's going to blow up. I really am. So, plus I look good. So a lot, you know, that that's only going to help with uh, people buying stuff. You know, blonde, big boobs, Pamela Anderson look like thing. That's only that's only going to help. You know, having a personality and looking good. That's really going to help. You know, it's different watching like, you know. So some of these people talk shows, whereas you're then you're watching like a blonde with big tits who's good looking, who's actually can be funny too. You know, because oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. That's 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 a fun thing. You know, they do behind the scenes interviews in porn. You know, when you're watching a porn, like a lot of these directors, they'll do behind the scenes interviews and where they, yeah, Pam, you know, tell us then how you got started. Nah, nah, nah. You know, they're always running back to me. You know, they'll be like, oh shit, you know, we tried to like interview that girl. She was like so boring. Nah, nah, nah. And they always come back to me because I always do something else, start flashing and doing something nasty, start sticking a dildo like this size of me, you know, whatever, just like something, you know, like entertaining, you know, because so many people just don't know how to react to the camera and just aren't fun. And this business, I mean, come on, we're wearing porn, people. Have like, you had to no, tell anybody? Great. Huh? Have you had to tell another star that, hey, lighten up, or are there a lot of stars that you come into contact that, mm. I mean, you do have a personality here. I mean, not like a lot of people, so how, how do you? Well, that's why I think a lot of people like like to, it's, you know, that's why it's so easy for me to get like guests for my shows and stuff like that, because anytime you're around Pam, you know you're going to have a fucking good time. <laughs> you know, no, I'm serious. It's like, yeah, you know, like even on my first show, my, my two guests were like, Oh, we don't drink that much or whatever. But I knew that they had like good personality, so I knew that they're gonna be all right. Dude, by the end of the show, they're both like sh- chugging shots and just get yeah. And I was like, oh, I thought you weren't gonna drink, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, they're getting wasted. And it was a good time, and you know, everybody always wants to have a good time. Right. Everybody okay. wants to party. All right. If you don't want to party, then you're just lame. That's my that's my theory. Well, I mean, it's good for you anyways to like always be happy and. You know, it's good for your endorphins. You know, it's 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 good for you. How long do you think you're gonna Selfie. keep on with the party life, porn and uh, God. private parties and just your own parties that oh, you have yeah. a club? How long do you think this is? Yeah, we should talk about it. We didn't talk about that. Yeah, that's another thing I started doing like about five months ago, six months ago, throwing my own parties for the industry. Um, yeah, I actually just got the idea because I went to a bunch of parties and I thought they were like lame and I thought I could do better <laughs> ones. And um, so then I, yeah, then I, I started hooking up with some of my friends who were promoters and stuff. And so, yeah, now I'm doing parties like every two months. I threw a big one in Vegas for CES. I had like 1,500 people there still at 7.30 in the morning. It was like standing room only at Club 7. It was totally fun. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of my girlfriends there who were, you know, good looking and crazy too. And, uh, and yeah, I just threw in a bar fly like three weeks ago and I had like, God, I had some of the most beautiful women in porn there. The guys were going crazy. They know. And, uh, yeah, so that's just really fun. You know, another fun thing to do just to take a break cause we all work hard. And so it's fun to just get fucked up with porn people. And I have chip and nails and stuff that come too. Cause I'm into all the male strippers. I talk about them in all my movies. So I always get VIP to all their shows. So it's fun. Wow. Seriously. Yeah. That way I have something there for the women at the parties. Yeah. yeah. That way everyone's happy. You always have to make sure everybody's happy. Well, yeah. You have to think about that. I was going to say something about, have you met Pamela Anderson? Think how you do that. Pamela Anderson, no. It's funny. VH1 just contacted me. They want me to do a show about um, my resemblance to her. They Somebody, I guess, told them about my website. And so I think VH1 is going to do a show on me and about how, you know, what's it like being a celebrity lookalike and using that for my business ventures. Mm-hmm. And so I just sent them a tape, actually, and I was just like, yo, looking like Pam has totally made me a lot of money. You know, and the fact that I'm outgoing, too, that helps, too. And, um, yeah, that's just been beneficial since the beginning. I cannot downplay that. I play that up. Uh... Yeah, obviously I use that for my stage name. I got my name legally changed to Pamela Peaks a couple years ago, so that is my real name. And um, yeah, I've been told that all my life. So that has just been a bonus. The fact that we're both from Canada totally works out. So that helped with my stripping because right. everybody like loved Pam up there in Canada. And then because I look like her, you know, a lot of guys would get me in dance for them. You know, so that was cool. And then um, hey, you know, when I got the website up, 
I'm putting that on the website, Pamela Anderson lookalike. And then a lot of guys, you know, really like that and stuff. And I actually get a lot of people who don't see other girls for escorting. And if they're going to do it once because they're like nervous or whatever, or they're picky, a lot of the guys for the first time, they want to do it with me because it's like, I look like Pamela Anderson. So it's like the fantasy, right? You know, okay. if they're going to spend the money. They're going to do it with me because of that, you know, um, but yeah, because that's made me a lot of money. It's pretty cool. I walked in a bar, you know, I, I've heard, heard that forever, you know, walking in a bar, Pam, they just yell it. They just yell it, hey, Pam, no, 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 ask for my autograph, no, no, no. It's like, shit, yo, I'm not her, whatever. But I guess we're around the same height. We're around five, she's around 5'8, five, I'm 5'9. Five, so we had a lot of similarities there. When I walk around Vegas, sometimes I'll wear, you know, like the big, huge sunglasses like she does and stuff like that. And the people are stopping me like all the time and stuff. It's funny. Have you got really funny gifts? Or, or things bought for you, dinner, no, I anything because they thought that you were Pamela? Um, no, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could do that, you know. But, you know, they'll, they'll, a lot of people, you know, autographs and stuff like that, you know, and I'll, you know, make their day, you know, because they think that or whatever. You know, that's a lot in Vegas. It's a lot in Vegas. They're thinking they're seeing people here, actually, too. Yeah, in Vegas, a lot in the casinos, walking around and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, that only helps because she's all over the place. Plus, it's great because it's not like she's a fuck-up, you know? She, she She's a good businesswoman. She's made a lot of money. I mean, she's retiring now. You know, with a shitload of money. She's got, like, $10 million mansion and stuff like that. So that only helps because her reputation is good. And she's a good businesswoman, so that helps. It's not like she's, like, some fuck-up drug addict who never went anywhere, you know? Right. Uh, so yeah, that helps a lot. Actually, I was supposed to, I go to the Playboy Mansion parties a lot and, um, she was supposed to be at some of the parties that I was at, but she ended up never showing up. So I actually have a lot of clients that know her. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> they say she's a drunk. I think we get along great. <laughs> they say she's a drunk. So did you and want to give a shout out to her? <laughs> yeah. Hey Pam, call me. My website, yeah, I got my numbers on there. No, they say she's a drunk and she, uh, you know, tries to fuck whoever is around her. So we would just get along really well. <laughs> I'm going to, um, we have about five minutes. I'm going to play the name game with you. I'm going to say the name. I want you to say the name back to me and the first thing that comes to your mind. Oh, okay. Oh, I was supposed to play this the other night yeah, with a client. Okay. Larry Flint. Larry Flint, uh... Balls, a lot of balls. Bill Margol. Bill Margol. <laughs> nice guy, likes teddy bears. Jenna Jameson. Judge, hot, hot and very uh, smart businesswoman. Rob Black. Rob Black, crazy. <laughs> funny, crazy. Howard yeah. Stern. Howard Stern, great, very funny. Very funny, hope he stays on the air. Because I'm coming back on, baby. Tracy yeah. Lords. Tracy was great. My mother's actually reading her uh, autobiography now to understand why the hell I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> but I think it's great because she's loaded too. She's made a lot of money. She's living in a Malibu mansion now and stuff. So, yeah, great, hot, smart businesswoman again. And is into big blue blonde, so I'd love to party with her too. <laughs> I was actually going to go down to her signing a couple months ago, but I ended up not making it. I got a call or whatever. But, yeah, she liked me and some of my girlfriends. Yeah. John Holmes. John Holmes, uh, why, yeah, I don't know, personally, saw the movie Wonderland, great, big cock, yeah, apparently he was gay, I think, I don't know, yeah, I don't know him, so I don't know, yeah. Paris Hilton. Great, would love to party with her, saw her at the Playboy match, and another one that just loves to get hammered and screwed, would love to hang out with her, yeah, I, yeah, her and uh, Nikki, I saw them at the mansion, very cute, they look like little dolls, mm -hmm. yeah. And some of my clients see her at parties all the time. They say she's always falling down. Like Paris, just annihilated and always just like eating shit and falling. Yeah. So I'd love to party with her too. Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy, one of my good friends. Yeah, was at my party at Barfly. Yeah, great guy. Hilarious. Hilarious. I would definitely have him on my shows as soon as possible. Crack up. Crack up. That guy's funny. Max Hardcore. Max Harcourt, cool guy, gave me free drink tickets at uh, his party. I don't know him well, but he's always been like really cool to me. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, I walked in one of his parties. He's like, yeah, here's some free drink tickets. So I was like, cool, man. Always wears a hat. Yeah. Yeah. 
And one last question. Who do you see the next big female star on the rise is right now? Besides me, uh, the next big female star, Jesse Jane. Another hottie, totally cool, loves party. Yeah, Jesse Jane, really pretty. Uh, you know who she is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a hottie. Who doesn't, right? Who was it? Uh, Brad Armstrong or whatever? He was just saying in an interview that he's trying to get in her pants right now. <laughs> Him and she's everyone not going else. for it. Yeah, but she's cool. She's not a diva. She's totally cool. I see her at parties a lot. Yeah, she's totally nice. Great personality. Yeah. How I saw you... Nikita the other night, but I didn't get to meet her. I'm dying to meet Nikita. Uh. Yeah, I met her in Vegas. Did you? Yeah, I heard she's great. Yeah. She likes the vodka. Vodka? Yeah, she is. Yeah. Um, she's cute. Cool. Wow. Good, you happy?